Darktide has a few mechanics that aren't explained very well in the game, so here I am to explain them. We're going to keep it quite simple and casual so we don't get too number crunchy. Let's kick it off with Stagger. So what exactly is Stagger? Well, Stagger is what we do to enemies all the time by knocking them off balance, whether that's just a simple step backwards that we might make them take or full on pushing them to the floor. Any of these options is what we call a staggered enemy. Now, an important note for Vermintide players, if we shoot this boy in the leg just from standing, we do 165 damage. If we then push him to the floor and do the same thing, we will do the same amount of damage. This shows us that there is no extra damage done to a staggered enemy, unlike Vermintide, where staggered enemies do take more damage. So get that out your head straight away. Although it can be applied to weapons seemingly with blessings, Skullcrusher here, target receives two stacks of plus five damage if already staggered. So there is still some form of enemies taking extra damage when they're staggered. It just comes in the form of a blessing now. For the most part, understanding stagger is pretty much just common sense physics. If an enemy is big and heavy, they're going to be harder to stagger and knock off balance than a smaller, lighter enemy. Although, it all depends on the force that you're hitting them with. If you're using a big, heavy weapon, there's more chance to stagger than if you're using a tiny knife. Which is why most weapons will struggle to knock around a big boy Ogren Crusher, because there's simply too much mass there to move. But with certain multipliers, we can actually stagger a big boy even with a smaller weapon from headshots or critical hits, maybe even character abilities. And then there's things like grenades and explosions from barrels that can knock them over as well. And the same thing applies to ranged weapons. Some have the ability to knock around and stagger even the biggest of boys, while some weapons can only stagger the lightest of targets. If you inspect your weapon and press tab to view the attack breakdown, you can actually see the stagger numbers and see if your weapon is any good for staggering enemies or not. In the case of this heavy axe, we can see there's pretty good double figure numbers here. Comparatively to the combat blade, which is obviously a very light weapon, you can see the stagger numbers are much lower, even some being zero against the carapaced enemies, but some being nearly as high as the axe in the critical weak spot hits. And we see the same thing again if we look at a bolter, big high stagger numbers, comparatively to a las gun which has very low stagger numbers so a similar situation to the axe and knife so how does the game actually calculate these stagger numbers well who cares it doesn't really matter to be honest as i say just think about common sense physics and you've pretty much got the idea if you'd like some clue though enemies have a hit mass number which i think comes into it they have a stagger resistance and a stagger reduction somehow some combination of those stats Meeting with the stagger of your weapon or whatever source of force is hitting the enemy gives you an outcome. That is, whether you will stagger the enemy or not. Like I say, doesn't really matter for most people. I play on Damnation, the hardest difficulty, and I don't have a clue how it actually works. It doesn't really matter. But while it doesn't really matter how it works under the hood, it is important to understand stagger in the general combat of Darktide and what it does for you and your team. The first thing it does is that it takes away the threat. Here's a mauler, he's dangerous, he's terrifying, but now he's a clown on the floor because we staggered him. And now he's dangerous and terrifying again. Although I think I broke his brain. What about a horde of groaners coming to get you? Very scary until you stagger them all to the floor. So it takes the enemies out of the fight only for a short duration, unless you keep staggering them over and over again, which you generally want to do. But this just protects you and your team from damage. The other side of it is that it makes the enemy vulnerable to being attacked, completely defenseless, easy DPS for you and the team. So how much stagger do you want to bring to the party? For me, I like to be able to stagger some of the more unstaggerable things, like a rager here, a quick headshot with an axe, can actually stagger one of the generally unstoppable attacking enemies, which can really save some lives. So staggering the bigger, tougher, heavier boys is one kind of stagger that every team needs. And the other kind of stagger is a crowd control kind of stagger. A weapon that can hit four, five, six, maybe more enemies and knock them around all over the place, staggering them, preventing them from damaging your team. Particularly, this is what needs to happen in a horde. When you're overrun with high numbers of enemies, a big wide sweeping weapon like the Thunder Hammer here can stagger a lot of enemies in one big swing, keeping you and your team safe. Because if you get covered by a horde and you only have an axe and can only really attack one enemy at a time pretty much, you won't be able to stagger as many enemies, thus there's more chance you're going to get hit. If you are using more single target damage weapons, you will need to learn to throw in more pushes to make up for your weapon's lack of crowd control. And staggering ranged is just as important because it takes away that ranged danger from things like snipers, gunners and reapers. If you can stun them and stop them firing at you or your teammates, even if only for a second or two, that can be really helpful. 
So hopefully that gives you a general sense of stagger and what it means within the combat of Darktide. For now, just think about how much stagger you're bringing with your weapons, with your class, and we'll go a little deeper on this later on. Now to the next mechanic, one that is closely tied to stagger, cleave. A word you may have seen written on some of your weapon's stats. And if you read the description of those stats, it'll say something like the higher the cleave, the more enemies hit in one swing. But to give some examples here of the two ends of the spectrum of cleave, when I swing my weapon, I hit the enemy and it keeps traveling in the same direction, coming out the other side of the enemy, so to speak. So I'm able to easily and smoothly flow in to the next strike in a combo. I am able to cleave through this target. Now compare this to hitting a big boy Ogren Crusher, and well, can you see the difference of how the weapon is behaving? It comes into the target, hits it, but then goes back the same way it came. This is because the weapon and the force of the strike doesn't have enough juice to cleave through this target. There's simply too much big chunky boy mass there. And that's one of those stats going on underneath, hit mass. Every single enemy has a different hit mass. The bigger they are, the bigger the number is, right? So when I hit this crowd of much smaller, somewhat less armored boys, there are some flak armored boys, there are some unarmored dreg boys, but with each light weapon swing of this Katajan sword, I'm only able to hit two or three of these enemies, depending on which ones I hit because some are heavier than others here. So I'm able to cleave through a certain amount of targets and hit a certain amount of targets, even if they're not necessarily stopping my weapon in the same way as it did just now against that Ogre and Crusher. And here I've just used a heavy attack which hit four enemies, so using the heavy attack I get more cleave, right? That's simple enough to understand, more force, more cleave, you can hit more targets. So some weapons are designed to do this. Others, however, are not, such as axes. They pretty much only hit one target at a time. Some of them can kind of clip a second, but that just adds a little bit of stagger, not really a lot of damage. For the most part though, axes only hit one target at a time. They do a lot of damage though, and that's the difference. You either hit multiple targets and do less damage, or one target and do a lot of damage. Although there is plenty of variables with all the different kinds of weapons out there. Now, we can boost our cleave up though with blessings like this. Savage Sweep plus 150% cleave for two seconds on multiple melee hit. This is on the Katachan sword I've been using, and here's what it can do. So if I do a heavy hit here, I'll hit four enemies that gives me the buff. Now with a light hit, I can hit five enemies. That's two more than I could hit just now when I could only hit a max of three. This is the power of extra cleave, particularly from blessings or just from weapons that have more cleave than others. And while it's easy enough to cleave light targets, when you come to hitting bigger, heavier targets, this is where cleave can become more important. You see here, I've got a crowd of three heavier boys, some elites, but I'm only able to hit one of them at a time because the cleave on this weapon isn't great. This is also quite a low level weapon, by the way, so it's not doing a ton of damage in this damnation Sycanium. But we can see here, you get the point, I can only hit one enemy at a time. But if I go away and get my Savage Sweep Blessing activated, I can now hit two of the bastards. And this can be very, very nice. So I can only hit one enemy with a light hit, but what about a heavy hit? Well, if I swing from the right, I only hit the Mauler, but if I swing from the left, I can hit both of the Gunners. This comes down to hit mass. Big Chunky Mauler Boy has more hit mass than the other two put together, so we can't cleave through him. We can only hit just him. Whereas these other two, we can get just enough cleave to go through one and into and hit the second. So that's just a normal heavy attack. What about if I add the Savage Sweep Blessing onto it? Well, now going from left to right, I can hit all three. Now going from right to left, hitting the Mauler first, can I go through him? Yes, I can. And I can hit a second target with that extra cleave power from the Blessing. And there's a bunch of different type of extra cleave power blessings, so don't underestimate them. They can be useful for cleaving through even some of the sturdier of enemies. And one important note with the Mauler here, you'll notice if I crack him in the head, my weapon has the same reaction as when I hit the big old crusher. It comes back the same way I swung it from. Whereas if I hit him in the body, it will keep traveling in the same direction, potentially allowing me to cleave into a second target. Whereas if I hit him in the head, I won't be able to. So keep that in mind. Back to this clip from earlier, you notice me cleaving through all these hordes of poxwalkers, but when I hit this mauler that is buried between all of the enemies, he stops my hit and prevents me from cleaving any further, and that limits my damage in some way. And the fact that I'm cleaving a few other lighter enemies before I even hit him means I've got no chance of cleaving through him. Maybe if I hit him just by himself, I might be able to knock him around. But be aware of these heavier, more massy, chunkier enemies that can stop your cleave and really limit what you can do with it. 
So having a weapon with a lot of cleave or that can have its cleave increased with blessings and such can have a number of great benefits. First of all, it's great for crowd control, right? The more enemies you can hit, the more enemies you can stagger and knock around. That means more enemies controlled or more hordes more quickly cleared away. That's good. It also means more damage overall. Even if you're only hitting one extra target than you might normally, the damage from that one extra target, if that's happening every 15 or 30 seconds over the course of a 20 minute mission, that extra damage is going to add up on that one target or two targets or three targets. So there's a lot of potential extra damage with more cleave targets. And remember, this is all in comparison to other weapons, some of which don't hit many targets like axes. These are pretty bad at crowd control, pretty bad at horde clearing. You can't really hit more than one enemy at a time. And although you will most definitely kill them, if it's a horde of poxwalkers or something, you'll definitely kill one enemy with every hit. But when there's 50 of them, that can take a while compared to if you can hit six or seven of them at a time, you can get through them a lot quicker and keep yourself much safer from knocking them around all over the place with all the stagger, cleaving through all the millions of targets. You get the idea, right? It's not too complicated, but something to bear in mind when you're choosing your weapons. And again, we'll come back to this in a second. For the last point though, it's a fairly simple one. I don't really need to explain it. Armor piercing. It's fairly obvious if you've played a video game in your life, you probably know how armor piercing works, but I'll explain it nonetheless. Using a Katachan sword here, you can see I do some damage to an unarmored enemy and much less damage to a flak armored enemy. And the same thing with the Rager here, good damage to the unarmored one, not a lot of damage to the armored one. Pretty normal of slashing type weapons like swords. Compare this to an axe though, and you'll find that the damage is much more even between the targets. 267 against the unarmored and 263 against the armored. So pretty much a similar performance hitting either enemy. So armor piercing weapons are much better at dealing with flak armored enemies like these Rager's or even the traitor guardsmen. But we do have carapace armored enemies to worry about as well, which is a much tougher kind of armor and most weapons aren't going to be great against it. The Katachan sword, even with headshots here, you can see it really doesn't do a lot of damage. And this is a max level Katachan sword. Comparing to an axe, again, not great damage if you go for the body, but if you start banging out the headshots, you can start to get a big amount of damage and that can be the key to taking down these big boys. So armor piercing weapons are incredibly important, right? We understand this good for getting through the tough heavy boys. Now to the deeper meaning behind this video, why I'd like to explain stagger cleave and armor piercing is because of how important they are to a team composition. Not just you as an individual player and you bringing whatever weapons you'd like for whatever playstyle you'd like to use, but when you play a mission in Darktide, you're met with certain situations and how well you deal with those situations will be determined by what weapons and what capability your team has. Like in this footage here, you can see a bunch of armored boys that were taken out and then another small group of armored boys arrives. We're dealing with them one at a time because we were able to defeat the first group before the second group arrived, thanks to a couple of axes in the team. But what if we only had Katachan swords instead? We wouldn't have been able to kill the first group quick enough before the second group arrived and then we're in a bad situation with maybe 10 heavily armored enemies on us. So you can understand that there's a weakness in the team if nobody has any kind of armor piercing weapons or any efficient armor piercing weapons. You have a big hole in the team and that can be where runs fall down, at least on the higher difficulties, heresy and damnation, on malice and below, you can pretty much scrape by with whatever. But what I'm trying to advise you to do here is to think about the weapons that you and your team are bringing into a mission. Is it well-rounded enough to deal with heavy crowd situations, heavy armor, lots of it situations, lots of specials, lots of crushers, lots of whatever. When you're on that lobby screen and you can at least see your allies melee weapons, at the moment we can't see ranged weapons, which is annoying. Hopefully we will be able to in the future. But from this, we can get an idea of the capability of our team. At the moment, looking at this team composition, we got a lot of horde clearing power, but perhaps not a lot of armor piercing. So I've changed to an ax to try and fill that hole a bit. Although maybe the zealot and the veteran here both have bolt guns, so they do have a good bit of armor piercing on them. Once we are able to see our entire team's loadout, this will be much better and much more accurate and easier to do. But for now, it's good to think about it. Think about what you're capable of doing. Do you have any crowd control potential? Do you have any armor piercing potential? What can you deal with? And then think of the bigger picture. What can your team deal with? Is there a big glaring weakness that is gonna be the reason we fail this run? I plan to go more into this in a separate video, which I will do soon. So keep an eye out for that. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the future.